Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm okay. It's a little choppy. Can you hear oh, me? No. Okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we're good to go. I hope okay. you don't mind I'm outside, girl. No, I'm outside. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked because I was like, oh my goodness, you're outside too. This is perfect. This is this is a lot of me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But let me um, introduce you and the show. So, sh um, hello, everyone. My name is Michael Lee. Like I said, I am the blogger, Kitchen Witch, Flow Living Nomad, and blogger at MichaelLee.com, where I talk about all things food, travel, and wellness. For me, this conversation is all about wellness. Um, yes, and I have a beautiful guest. Is it Imani? Imani, yes. Yes, all right. So I just wanted to say, we got Imani right here. We're all going to talk about fat girl joy and sexuality and blackness and all that good, good, good stuff. Yes. So <laughs> just to introduce our guest, um, first off, I want to say that the Mikey Chat Show is when I interview community change makers um, all about their work and who they are, what inspires them. Um, yeah, it's just a dope, amazing conversation ever since I started this. And I'm so grateful to continue on uh, going. So thank you so much again to um, um, for just being my guest. And because I asked you like way earlier in the year. <laughs> and you know what I mean? And I'm just like, I'm so happy that you said. I just felt like when it comes to, you know, fatness and sexuality and being you know proud of who you are in your skin and all of that i just felt like june is the best yes. for it you know skins out you know and especially with the bikinis everybody's like wear that two-piece and i just felt like june was a really great time to have the conversation okay. since it's about to be summertime like yeah so um but let me introduce you guys to our beloved guest so Imani Whiteherd is a black activist, podcaster, and storyteller dedicated to the liberation and celebration of black people. She is the creator of Dear Black Woman Talk Your Shit, a safe space styled event that brings resources and workshops to women within the community and providing spaces to be heard. She's also created Cashmere Audio Stories and Romantic and Erotic Stories for Black Consumption. And like I said, one thing about Imani is that she's all about black, fat, girl joy, and sexuality, which is our topic today. Yeah. So. <laughs> you make me sound so cool. My mother would be so proud. <laughs> oh, yes. Because you are cool. You are cool. So the first question I wanted to ask is, what is your journey when it comes to the work that you do? What, in, what gravitated you to do this work? So honestly, my grandmother is from Charleston, South Carolina, and she boycotted and she had sit-ins um, and she was an activist in her own right. So hearing about yeah. her stories in in the Deep South through all of that, um, I, I knew that I wanted to contribute to society in the way that she did. Um, and then also, I think I got to a point where I was talking to one of my mentors and I was telling her everything that I'm passionate about and, you know, how I care about equity and how I care about black people and black liberation. And she said, if I went on your page, if I saw what you were posting, would, you, would that reflect your life? Like, you got to be about it. You can't just say yeah. it. sharing a post on on Instagram, sharing a post on Facebook. It's not enough. Like a social media activist is dope you can use your platform to to be an activist but if you just share and to share and you're really not walking that walk mm. there's a disconnect and you know shout out to my circle my best friend pam is on here thank you pam i tried to get my hair cut i was looking like somebody's unruly <laughs> baby father so i had to get my life right um, hi but, pam <laughs> she 
she actually, you know, reminds me too. Like, if you say you're a black activist, if you say that you're out here for the community, you gotta be about it. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. it was those two gut checks from two powerful black women that gravitated me towards the space and doing the work. Mm-hmm. So, about the work that you do, um, can you elaborate more of like what what have you done since? those gut check happened? Yes. Yeah, so I started this um, this event series. It was when the world was still open um, and I would yeah. travel to different cities and host these safe space discussions for black women. Um, okay. So it was called Dear Black Women Talk Your Shit. Um, I went to Detroit. I went to D.C. I went to Baltimore um, and I had one in New York. Um, and the idea of this was just gathering black women together to have a moment to just think and to be honest with themselves and to share that truth and to find sisterhood and to find unity. Because I mm. feel that we as black women, we hold up so many people and so many things and everyone else, but we don't allow ourselves that grace and that mercy to be human. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? After um, talking to a few black women, um, because I was doing photography at the time, and I was asking them, like, what do you need as a black woman? And what I kept hearing was protection. I just need someone to listen. You know? I just need someone to make space. So um, that was the, the, the birth of that. And then I started, you know, creating a platform with this series called Live Your Truth. Um Yeah that I invited black women, um, cis, trans, queer, hetero, just talking about their experiences as black women and what that means for them. Mm -hmm. Um, Because for me, I don't want to be a change maker who creates the story. Yeah. I want to be a change maker that provides the platform for black women to tell the stories themselves because that's what we need. Okay. We need more autonomy. We need more spaces where we can tell our own truth and stand in our own truth, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So in the circles, what are some of the things you talked about with um, the some of the outcomes? But I, um, like you know, black women saying they needed protection, but was there any more outcomes that came from the um, events that you put put out? The only outcomes was just a sense of community. So a lot of these women were able to find sisterhood within each other and to connect with people. And then also I, from time to time, I raise money for black women to go to therapy. So Mm. like I'll have people donate and I'll just pay for their co-pays for their first sessions or whatever sessions they have. I love that. Love uh, that. Yeah, I, I'm i not going to big up and say that I'm consistent with it because I am still navigating my own mental health journey and, you know, depression mm-hmm. is real. Yes, but, it is. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was kind of the outcomes, like getting people into a space where it's okay to talk about your feelings and let's take it a step further and connect you with our uh, mental health professional. Yes. Yes, I love that. So let's die. Um, let's go ahead and talk about fatness and sexuality. Yeah. Do you have like a fat origin story? Like, not just like you know. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying like it was the first time you realized you're fat. Maybe that is the <laughs> origin story. But like, you know what I mean? When you decided to be liberated and like. Have you have like a fat acceptance story or any of that sort? Whew, child. Um, I think I wouldn't. I don't know if it's a. Okay, so let's let's try to marry this. So yeah, it's it's kind of when I realized that I was fat and I was gonna have to accept it um, because you know I- when you start because I was I was I've always been thicker. My father's side mm-hmm. of the family, heavy set um, women, full women, full thighs, full breasts, full everything. Um, and I've always been hippie. I've always had thighs. But I had fibroids. And then I went into like a really deep bout of depression for a few years. And I gained over 100 pounds. Mm. And, um, mm. you know, when you first start gaining weight, 
He's like, I'm going to keep these clothes because I'm going to fit right back in them. I'm going to lose this weight. Ooh, I ain't throwing it away. And then I realized all the clothes I had in my closet, I could not fit. And I was still holding on to this dream a year and a half later that I was going to lose weight and magically fit into all these clothes again. Yeah. So it was in that moment where I was like, all right, girl, this is the body that you have. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that I am always confident. I'm not going to say that I am always out here living my truth like it takes a lot like for me to be outside with my arms out and my breast out and legs out it takes you know a, a conversation like hey, you that bitch you that bitch yes <laughs> yes in the mirror, like you that you that girl like um, yes <laughs> so and then also just my i talk about her everywhere i go my best friend pam is a beautiful big woman and she is just so she's on some shit like I'm cute whether I'm skinny or fat. Mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. popping weight or without weight. Like, and mm-hmm. I just see that. And I started following more women that look like me. And if anyone is listening to this and they're struggling with their body journey, follow people that look like you. That's a game changer. It is. It truly is. And even maybe not even look like you. Maybe it'd be like because I've also. Um, follow people who are fatter than me mm-hmm. and stuff and seeing the confidence and just seeing different body types mm-hmm. having been like okay everybody rocking they shit like yep. you know yeah yeah it really is a game changer truly 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 for me that my body acceptance journey has been rocky like you like I was keeping them clothes mm-hmm. <laughs> in the closet and, you know, saying, like, I'm going to get here, I'm going to get here. I was very into, like, too much into, like, working out and eating and stuff. And the, I actually developed an eating disorder because wow. of it. And, yeah, but there was this one time I went traveling. I went to Guadalupe, and I had this bomb yellow dress on from, like, this um, plus-size designer, Zili for, for she. Mm-hmm. And I... Like, everybody was looking at me, okay? And yeah. now, like, you know what I mean? Like, I felt super sexy and confident. And that was the time where I was like, I'm not going to have a weight loss journey anymore. I'm not going to try to focus on losing weight anymore. Mm. And when I made that decision, it was like a burden lift off of me. And, like, I retained, like, I had some of my mental space back. To, like, focus on the things that I really, truly loved and enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, like you, I definitely, that was the time where I was also looking at different bodies, um, bodies like me that was stunting. <laughs> so I totally resonate. I totally, totally resonate. So when it came to that body acceptance and stuff, did you come across any microaggressions? Did you come across any just like negativity? From others. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> people haven't seen in a while. Oh, you got fat. And I'm just like, hello, good morning. How you doing? Like, nice to see you. Like, that was always, like, the topic of the conversation. Like, hey, girl, you getting a little thick? And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me something yeah. I don't know. It's just like, when you're fat, that's the first thing that people want to talk about is your weight. Like, they don't care about nothing yeah. else. They just want to talk about your weight. And it's, and also... Two, I want to touch mm-hmm. upon this. We have to stop putting so much pressure on fat people to love their body all the time. Because mm-hmm. self-love and, oh my God, I wish I had your confidence. All that type of stuff is it's ass backwards. Like, it's, it's harmful yeah. and it's, it's detrimental to the psyche as well. Like, you're not always going to love your body all the time. And just because uh, a fat person has love, just because a fat person has confidence, it doesn't mean that it's something that's out of the norm, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that, too, I was experiencing. Like, a lot of my friends that were smaller would say, you know, I just can't, I can be fat. Like, it doesn't work for me. It works for you, but it doesn't work for me. And I was just like, what? That's hella fat phobic. <laughs> Girl, let me t- the things I've had people because I don't really I have a poor appetite and a lot of the reason why I still hold on to weight is because I don't eat 
So yeah. my body's like, sis, are we in the war? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like is, is this a block list? Like, let me hold on to this fat girl. So yeah. uh, a friend of mine, she never, she didn't believe me about my eating habits. And it wasn't until that we lived together. She was like, oh, you really don't eat. I thought that you used to just hide snacks under your bed. Mm. I've been at clubs where the, the bouncer has said no fat girls allowed turned me away and my friends at the time went in yeah like this this journey has been difficult and when you find confidence as a fat person it's a different type of self-love because it's a foundation that can't be it can't be shaken yeah, you really got to sit with yourself because everything around you is telling you that you're less than everything around mm-hmm. you is telling you that you're not worthy. Everything yeah. around you is telling you that the problem is you. So when you're able to wake up every day, dress however the fuck you want to dress, show up in spaces as yourself. That's a different type of mindset. That's a different type of is. strength. You know? It truly is. It truly is. I think also you have to, I think for me, one thing I had to, in, in my journey is, I had to remind myself, like, I'm also human too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I deserve to be respected like a fellow human being. Yeah. And some of the and some of the things that you were talking about in your experiences, like, and the people, how they treated you, and I've had experiences like that too, that they wasn't treating me like a fellow human being. Yes. Like you said, they were treating you less than. You know what I'm saying? Like you were inferior. And yeah, yeah, that's real. Speaking of, that was a beautiful lesson. Have you heard, um, when it comes to, um, have you had uh, any other lessons when it comes to the fat journey that you want to share? Um, sorry, I'm out. I'm, I'm trying to do hood rat <laughs> things with my friend. <laughs> I'm like, let me pass that this blunt real quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> if, we be, if we be real, if we be, okay, <laughs> yes, be real. I love it, girl. I, I told you it. the streets was calling my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So another lesson I learned was, or that I'm learning, is patience. Mm. 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 Patience. Patience. It's hard enough being black. It's hard enough being a woman. It's hard being a fat woman. It's mm-hmm. hard being a fat black queer woman. Like mm-hmm. there are just so many boxes that I tick off in terms of my identity that the world is like, yo, you really should just stay in the house. <laughs> like for real? Like girl, just park it up in the crib and just chill. But it's just yep, like patience, get out. right? Patience with myself that this is my journey, and mm-hmm. I'm not a hundred percent comfortable with my skin. There are days that are better than others, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. It's it's mm-hmm. Re- it's it's realistic. It's human for me to have days when I feel off. It's yeah. human for me to have days when I don't want to show up. It's human for me to be insecure. And to be patient with all of those things that come with that journey, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. I think one of the biggest lessons I've had to learn is identifying who Imani is underneath mm-hmm. it all. Because so many people try to put you in a box when you're Black, when you're a Black woman, when you're fat, um, when you're a fat Black woman, when you're queer. And you have to get to a space where you spend so much time with yourself. You can say at the end of the day, all of that stuff contributes to who I am, but it doesn't yeah. make me. It doesn't, yeah. It's not a make or break type of situation. Because if yeah. you give that too much power, now you're giving society a power to tell you how you should live. Mm. If that makes any sense. I hope I'm not sounding like a whole tub. I <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. It sounds good. You, you, get, know, you drop the zen. You know whole tub. You drop the zen. Smart and they... <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't use any imaginary words. You know, big words. 
you know, know that's all good <laughs> she said don't say expeditiously i heard you <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're taking it out of context and stuff. That's not what the word means. Anyways. So let's talk about dating and sexuality I, and fatness. Yes. Oh girl, what you wanna talk about? What you wanna talk about, girl? How is it for you when it comes to dating and being fat? I know for me it's been very interesting. <laughs> So I'm newly single. Mm-hmm. I was in a relationship for four years, and um, my partner and I decided to part ways. Um, and it's been interesting because, and I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty. I don't feel like I'm worthy enough to put myself out there, mm. and it's not because. I don't think that I'm like beautiful or anything like that. It's because being in a relationship with someone for so long, you put your defenses down and you are truly able to just, you're comfortable. That person accepts you. They love you. Y'all bond in four years. You're just like, okay, this is who I am. This is me and my do-rag. This is me with no brows. Like you accept yeah. me. I come outside looking crazy and it's all right. I don't care what anybody thinks because I got me a part. I got me somebody. And yeah. now it's like, oh, I really got to, I got to care about how I look when I go outside. <laughs> like, yes. I, gotta, I gotta brush my hair. Like, I gotta look presentable. So that's the shift. Um, mm. And then I think also being in that bubble for so long, it protected me against the harsh realities of dating as a fat woman. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's so hard to find someone that just accepts you as a person. My experience, there has been a few people who are like, you know, I love big women. I'm like, that's not sexy to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, if yeah. you start the conversation with, I love big women, like, what you want me to feel? I love Popeyes. We sharing things that we love. Like, <laughs> what, <laughs> what do you want me to do with this information? Like, so, um, so I'm still trying to navigate that, but I'm definitely in the space where I want to I wanna have my whole face, you know? Like, I want to go out there and I just want to just have casual intimacy. I want to experience my body in new ways. I want to explore what that feels like, what that looks like. Um, Mm -hmm. And especially as a fat woman, like, how liberating that. It's like when you're able to be intimate with someone without caring about how you look or how they're perceiving you, you can really just tune into pleasure like that's that's top tier. <laughs> it truly is. I've I've experienced that. I experienced that when I started to tap into my queerness compared to when I was with um, men. Because with men, I was like, I gotta be the freakiest, the the sexiest Girl. person that they've been with, and I was constantly like filled with anxiety and just like mental stress that I couldn't even like enjoy it. And when I tried to enjoy it, I realized I didn't really enjoy it that much. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, because I was really just focused. But when I started tapping into queerness, it started to, like, also, like, really, like, have fun with other fat Black women. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a spiritual experience. Let's say that. It was really good. Um, I felt I like that. I accepted myself more because of it too. I'm like, oh, oh, we like this? Oh, this is me. Okay. I I haven't been with a woman in so long that I feel like I'm out of touch. I feel like that auntie that goes to the club and they're like, what you doing here? Like, (laughs) I just feel so out of touch. Like, um, because my last partner, he was a, um, Mm -hmm. he was a a man. And, Mm -hmm. you know, um, obviously being monogamous. But now I'm just like, I want to embrace that sexuality. You know, I identify as a pansexual. I truly don't believe Mm -hmm. that love has limits. Um, Yeah. So I want to experience that. But I just feel so out of touch. It's just like, I, I'd be on dating apps like, what's your favorite snack? Like, <laughs> I, don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. 
I'm just so out of touch. Like, you look nice. What's your favorite candle scent? Like, bitch, get out of my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. One day you'll find somebody who'll be like brown sugar vanilla. You know? <laughs> You know, autumn breeze, you know, something, something from like autumn Bath and breeze. Body Works. <laughs> you I like saga. Give, you, I don't know. You're going to have to give me some tips. Put your girl on. Help the sister out. Like, what is I am goal? not the one because I have been, I have been on Hinge. Hinge has just been telling me like, are you, are you, Hinge is like Duolingo at this point. Just <laughs> reminding my <laughs> Reminding me that uh, it's there, and you know, <laughs> if you want to speak it, so no, <laughs> girl. You know, I've been I've been single for a since twenty. I yeah, since twenty twenty, mm -hmm. and I was I just finished a situation ship like right. maybe a month and a half ago. I realized that um, the part, the thing that I keep bucking up on is the people. Whether it doesn't matter what gender, um, what identity, but I feel like also it comes when it comes to my fatness is that they kind of treat me like, oh, this is someone who's looking for, like, I'm going to have fun with them until, like, somebody, like, who is society pretty come along or, like, skinnier mm. comes along, like, stuff like that. So, like, being, like, loved, like, in the shadows and yes. I... I'm like, I'm kind of over that. Yes. <laughs> I'm really, truly over that. Like, yes. my last relationship, um, not the situation, but my last relationship in 2019, even though it was very quick, it taught me so much of, like, the expansion of, like, how I could be loved. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, that partner really, like, showed me out. Like, all that stuff, like, really, like, truly showed me, like, I can be loved out in the open and, and, and honored and caressed and stuff. Yes. Now, while we, like, they're poly and I'm not, so that's the reason why it didn't work out. Yeah. But the thing of the matter is that I'm like, I had a taste of that. I'm like, that's all I want. I even want more than that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, because I know that I'm worthy yeah. of that, you know? So, but for me, I've been just focusing really truly on school and, like, blogging and doing mm -hmm. this that I haven't really been looking. Um, but yeah, like truly, truly, truly the dating scene as a fat as a fat person has been something else. Something else. Because it's hard to the fetish it's either you being yep. fetishized or like loved in the shadows. Like yes. what is going on? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that part right there. And I think that we mm -hmm. need to have more conversations about that. That is so hard to kind of sniff out people's intentions. Like, again, like yeah. you said, am I a fetish or am I something that you like in in in, in secret? Yeah. And I, and I appreciate you for sharing that, you know, will I just be fun for the moment until someone that society deems pretty comes along? Because yeah. I feel yeah. that way as well. Um, mm -hmm. And when I got out of my last relationship, like just being honest, I was like, damn, I gotta lose weight before I start dating again. And I had yeah. to, like, yoke myself up real quick. You're back. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just like, I don't think people understand how intense the world is when you're fat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, it's not, and I don't say that to play victim, I don't say that for sympathy, but I say that for context. Like, from shopping from just the way that you experience things, um, people's perceptions of you, love. It's, it's, it's beautiful when you're able to navigate it. It's beautiful when you have a sense of self where you just don't give a fuck. But mm -hmm. it's still very challenging. Yeah. 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 And I think it kind of, I want to piggyback of what you said about, you know, we are, when it comes to like, don't, assume that we're always confident don't assume that we're always because we do deal with these things and these things will make us you know have it's hard, it's hard. and i can't just be confident and be like i love my body like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what i mean while dealing with all these things when people are saying you shouldn't love your body at all mm -hmm, you know what i mean mm -hmm. and trying to bring it down so yeah yes 
So I just wanted to thank you once again because this has been a beautiful conversation. This has been a beautiful conversation. And before I go, I just want to ask you two more questions. Okay. So the one question is, when it comes, do you have any tips for anyone who saw our conversation today or maybe later on and want to start to accept themselves and their bodies and maybe want to start dating again or rock the two-piece mm-hmm. because summer is coming and all of that? Like, what are some of the lessons and the things that you want to, them to take away from the conversation? In terms of summer, and I say that because that's the conversation I had with myself last year. I used to cover up my arms all the time because my arms have always mm-hmm. been beefy. And when I gained weight, they got bigger. Uh, and I was, I remember I was outside with a jacket and it was like 90 something degrees and I was dying. And I thought to myself, I said, I'm over here about to have a heat stroke because I'm mm-hmm. trying to hide my stretch marks from somebody else. Because somebody else who doesn't want to see a fat body and a dress is is judging me. I'm yeah. going to have a heat stroke because you have a problem with my body. Mm-hmm. Would I sound right? Like, that isn't. That <laughs> isn't. Sound right. So anybody that wants to go to the beach, anybody that wants to have a hot girl, hot boy, hot day, them summer. Just, your body, you are the center of your world. Yes. Your comfort is more important than anything else. You are the most valuable thing that you are on this planet. And when there are days when you don't feel like that, remember that. I have it written on my mirror. I have things posted on my wall. I surround myself with beautiful black women who remind me who I am when I forget. Like, so I would say, get your village together write that you're worthy you're beautiful whatever it is that you need to see it to remind yourself and to just show yourself grace have patience with yourself because this journey is not a sprint it's a marathon yeah we are always growing we are always experiencing life differently and show yourself that patience yes i love it i love it my favorite thing to say is um patience grace and self-compassion yes and i love i love that that's a beautiful ending so how can people who want to continue to follow you see what you're doing um how can they reach out and yes you can follow me on instagram at imani internet um that's a-n-t-o-n-e-t-t-e um, mm-hmm. And stories by Imani at um, dot com. Right now, I'm taking a break from social media. Um, it's become really overwhelming. So I feel I, you. I'm about to do the same thing. <laughs> it's so overwhelming, and I just found myself comparing myself to other people. So I was like, let me just mm-hmm. slow down and take a break from it. But if you do want to keep up with me, I if you message me, I am around. <laughs> I'm just not posting like that. I feel you. I feel you. Take your time. Enjoy your, enjoy life. You know what I mean? That's because of the internet. So, yes. But thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this Mikey chat. It's all about fat girl joy, sexuality, blackness, all that good stuff. Thank you so much, Imani, for being my guest and dropping gems. And this is a beautiful conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Till next time. Peace, y'all.